Hello everybody! Next off the pile is a Stanley number 386 jointer gauge. Let's take a look at it. Back in the days when carpenters were joining boards by hand, this old 386 was a definite must-have. Today buying one at book price is going to set you back $100 to $175. It was manufactured from 1911 to 1947. It attaches to either side of a jack, four, or jointer plane. That thumb screw on the side allows it to be adjusted for angles anywhere from 30 to 90 degrees. Stanley recommended adding a wooden fence when you're doing fine work. This one has the wooden fence already attached. The metal's nickel plated, the knob is rosewood, and overall it looks pretty good. It could be put to work just like it is, but there is a bit of dirt, grime, and surface rust here and there, so I'm just going to clean this one up. First thing to do is to just break it down. And here's a look at her all broken down. Lots of rusty small parts, but not too bad. It's all surface rust. It should clean up pretty good. First thing I'm going to do is take this main part of the fence and put it in my sandblaster. And given the fact that this is nickel plated, it's going to be a very, very non aggressive, light, low pressure, holding the nozzle back away from the nickel plating just to clean it up. Setting the pressure too high, holding the nozzle too close is going to remove nickel and that would not be a good thing. And with the blasting done I'm going to head over to my wire wheel to shine up the nickel and follow that up with that little wire brush and some steel wool. The nickel cleaned up pretty good. There's a look at it. Next thing I'm going to do is put a coat of lacquer on the fence and the knob. That fence looks like it was made out of oak. I put a coat of rosewood stain on it and lacquer's next. I like to use the Minwax lacquer. It's a clear satin. I use lacquer because that's what Stanley originally used and it's still a good finish. Light coats, lots of them. And while the lacquer dries, I'm going to get to work on the small parts. I use multiple layers of 150 grit paper in the screw slots. And I'll finish everything up on my wire wheel. The small parts cleaned up nice, and I'm going to give them a coat of rim oil. And after several coats of lacquer, some sanding and steel wool, the wooden parts turned out really nice. I put a little paste wax on them. They're ready to go back together. And the last thing I need to do before putting it back together is break out the dirty oil rag and put a coat over the nickel plated parts. Every nook and cranny cover the whole thing. And with a good coat of dirty oil applied, the next thing to do is wipe it off. And this old 386 does show its age, but it cleaned up quite well. We got rid of the rust. It's uh, ready to be put back together and be tested out. And before I take this old beauty for a test drive, I wanted to point out that she is a sweetheart airplane. That dates her to about the mid-1920s and makes this thing somewhere around 90, a little over 90 years old. And she is a beautiful old tool. I've selected a Stanley Bedrock 605 for the test drive. Got her all hooked up, tightened up, ready to go. Stanley definitely knew what they're doing when they designed this jointer gauge. It wraps around the base of the plane right here. And this screw right here tightens up against the top edge of the side and locks it in place. And in addition to that, you've got this plate right here on the back side that this screw locks down right up against the the inside of the side of your plane. So between those two that thing is locked secure and it's not going to go anywhere. You got them on the front and the back. I've selected a piece of poplar that has the joiner marks on the side from the modern electrical joiners. So it's a little bit rough so I'm going to try to square it up with the 605 and the joiner gauge. I checked my joiner gauge with the square and I locked it in place. 
Now I just need to make sure I hold the fence flat against the side of my, my board that I'm joining and go ahead and run it across. Skipping over the high spots. Now this old beauty is starting to get serious. One more pass and I think it's done. That's pretty. So the old 386 joiner gauge and my Bedrock 605 did the job. That board is straight. It's been jointed and squared at the same time. All those ripply edges have been taken out and I checked it with my square and it is dead on. You just can't beat a couple hundred year old tools. The old 386 passed with flying colors. Highly recommend it to anybody that does this type of work. Stanley's not the only company that makes them but I think Stanley makes the best one. I enjoyed doing this video. Hope you learned something. It's time for supper. Bye.